he, him and I are actually working on the new mural at the Visitor and Convention Bureau building. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, so uh, we're working with uh, his designs, um, so you might see us up there on the list. Um, and then we also have Leslie Nottingham. She is uh, with the Cultural Arts Department, and she's going to be speaking on all the, the city stuff and just, you know, how to get your um, applications in and, and uh, public art so, uh, without further ado, uh, David and Leslie, okay. I mean, I feel like we could just kind of go back and forth, kind of have more of a conversation. Okay. So, do you want us to? Yeah, we'll come up and we'll yeah, we'll talk a little well. bit about how how we got David involved, yes, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> how we kidnapped him from the West Coast. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm still curious about that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how did that happen? How did that happen? Uh, uh, I guess, how did it happen, actually? How did it happen? Yeah, okay. I mean. So, um, <laughs> around uh, every year in the springtime, and we're a little late doing it this year, we open up our public roster for anybody who can work in the United States. So you have to, you have to, we have to be able to pay you somehow, because we want to pay you. We want to pay our artists. We open it up to anybody in the United States uh, through Cafe Online. And if you don't know what Cafe is, it's... Uh, um, a site for artists where you can go and you can find jobs and you can put your portfolio on and make yourself accessible yeah. to called, different places. Call, call for entry. Call, call for entry. Dot org. Yeah. Cafe. Call for entry. A super important resource for yes. me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we we hear yeah. uh, we get a lot from from that particular website. I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's just a website. Um, there is an umbrella organization. They have some other websites, but I West Staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something West like Staff. Okay. They're based out of Denver, Colorado. But the call for entry is yeah, it's it's, it's key to public art, mm -hmm. you know, applications. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we, uh, as the city, will put out a general call saying our artist roster is open. If you'd like to do work with the city. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see there. That didn't happen at all. Um, if you're if you're interested in working with us, uh, you'll need to supply your an artist statement, three samples of your work, and your resume. It really is that easy. Your contact information, and then kind of what your areas of expertise are. Obviously, if you're a muralist, I'm not going to be hiring you to do uh, a suspension piece from the ceiling. And that's just really not going to work out for anybody involved. Um, but the, the all called artists, our artist roster is open to anyone. If you do chalk art, if you do murals, if you do sculpture, go ahead, apply. It gets you, it gets you on our radar. And then what happens is <laughs> Sometimes we have a project inside the city. Sometimes we have a project outside of our office. Amber Alert. Oh, well, <laughs> Everybody's phone it. goes yeah. off. Yep. <laughs> uh, so in this case, the VCB was very interested in doing a mural. So what we asked them to come for us, we don't just say, here, go through our roster. We don't do that. We don't want like people contacting you and saying, hey, I, I want you to come down and them, them being like, oh, I have to pay you. No, that's not going to work. We, we have discussions. We want to make sure you, you have a general idea, you have a budget, you have an idea of what it means to be working with an artist. We're, we're kind of a resource for you. So if you need to bounce things off of us, please give us a call. We're more than happy to like sit down. We have an actual artist sheet on our website that goes through all of the things you wouldn't even necessarily think about. Like, are you going to need a lift? Are you going to need a road closure? Are you going to need insurance? Like all those little things that you you kind of might be thinking about, but don't quite realize the pitfalls. So how it worked with with the VCB is they said, "Hey, we want to do we want to do a mural." We said, "That's fantastic," and they said, "We want to do our logo on the side of the building." And I said, "No, um, <laughs> that is a sign. That is not." artwork and yeah. we really do try to steer people more towards art 
than just putting signs up. That's a different division in growth management. That is the sign department. They have very specific requirements. So, no. Um, so then we, we sat down with them and we're like, all right, so you can't put your logo up, but here's what we can do. So we sat down and we said, what's your budget? And they, they gave us an approximation and they said, what style are you kind of interested in? They're like, we don't know. And I said, okay, so you're looking for somebody who kind of has experience in X, Y, Z in this budget who might be available on this date. And this started way back in July of 2021. Yeah. We are now in it's March, April, yeah, almost April, April of 2023. April, so that shows you how long these things take. I pulled about five people from our artist roster and I put together a little PowerPoint for them and I went over and I said, okay, what do you think of these? And they were like, okay, not what we were thinking, but okay. And I said, all right, why weren't you thinking this? And they're like, all right, here's A, B, and C. And I said, okay, let me try again. And I kept him on the list because I was like, I, I think I think he's the, the one to go for. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> no, I, I was like, is, no, no, I, I think I think this one would look really good. This is awesome because this is something that artists never get. Yeah, to you hear. don't you don't you don't get to hear the back end. You don't get to hear the back end. And so I kept you and one other artist on the list and I really pushed for you and somebody else. I was like, I really think these two, if you could pick from these two, and they're like Fine, you're right, we'll look at those two. So they, they went back, they, they evaluated what they wanted to do, and um, they decided they would like to go forward with David here. And at that point, we reached out and we said, hey, would you be interested and available on, on yeah. these dates? And it actually got pushed back a whole bunch. Yes, I was, would you be available to do the mural in February? February. <laughs> which I was. Yes, yes. Uh, so at that point, we, we reached out and we got in contact yeah. with David. David can take it from there. Uh, yeah, so I was I got a nice email that we were interested in doing a mural and it was it's exciting. And so I, one part of the pro process that I was surprised by was I said, great, so I'll put together a design and um, you know, how many other people are presenting a design for this? And they said, no one. No one. It's like, it. you've already You're been it. selected. Been and selected. I was like, oh, okay. Um, so a lot of times in the past, what's happened is I'll, I'll apply for a project and they'll select three, four artists um, for a second stage, you know, and then usually pay them about 500 bucks. And then you present that design and then they select somebody you know one of those designs because and it makes sense i mean you you might like this person's work but you know all of a sudden i'm already been selected and i have to come up with a design and then what if they're like huh you know <laughs> but I, I it seems like everyone's happy so <laughs> um but yeah so it was that kind of surprised me i mm -hmm. mean i i so that's the first time that's happened where I was like, all right, I've already got the job. This is amazing. Um, Have you ever been to Florida? Briefly. Haven't spent much time. I grew up in Virginia, so I, I came down here a couple times just tootling around. But um, uh, that was the one of the first things I needed to do was start looking at you know, like I, my work is really based on nature, um, the environments that I'm in. And, and so I travel and usually do work based on the places I'm, where I am at. But with very limited personal experience in Florida, so like I was just going through lots and lots of photographs, mostly of Ocala National Forest because it's so close. And I was like, okay, I can work with some of this. This is cool. In fact, as soon as I get there, that's the first place I want to go, you know, and make sure I'm not way off base. Um, so I did that. I drove through and went down some crazy little side roads and stuff. And <laughs> did you hear from some up Yes. Yeah, I want to hear more about that too. Uh, so one of the things we, we sort of get bagged on in the city you know, confess this, we get bagged on for not using local artists all the time. Well, we want to make sure that our local artists are being exposed and getting opportunities yeah. 
to other artists who are already nationally established. So we thought it would be really great to one, avoid getting yelled at, um, <laughs> and two, really provide a really good opportunity for one of our local artists. And we had, we had been talking for a long time of, all right, how can we pair these people, you know, pair our artists that we have in our community up that would like to do this large scale work, and they haven't had the opportunity to do it yet. How do you get somebody the training? And when you work as an artist, a lot of it really is, it's almost that on the job, yeah. doing, Every making time those connections. Figuring things out. Yeah. And what, what, we hope to, what, what, what we hope will happen is one day you will get a call and you'll be like, we'd love you to do this job. And you're going to go, oh, yeah. I'm already booked. <laughs> but let me tell you about this kid that I worked with in Ocala, Florida. This is true. And also, <laughs> Every application, like public art application I've ever done, is like submit references, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we could you'd totally be both references. I'd be more the, you know, it, because that's a thing. I mean, like if you haven't done a, like a large scale mural, like being up on a lift, so, sometimes they want to know, you know, like have. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but people want to know, like, you know, like, well, can you do something on this scale, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, and with that, that mural that we're working on, it starts on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the whole thing is on a lift. And, uh, and that's new to me. So I've done a handful of murals, but uh, yeah. to be, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, and, and just like learning how to, I mean, we swing the lift out to look at it, you know. Cause <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the, the equivalent of in the studio doing this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. Yeah. 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 That's for, for definitely. It's we're already getting to the hot months. Today was was pretty brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that you said about the the like including local artists mm -hmm. because. Um, so, I mean, so my, I've been doing fine art for like 30 plus years, um, but I, my first mural was in 2016, um, and I, I didn't, I just thought, well, yeah, the mural, that sounds cool, and there was a regional um, local arts organization that had a mural roster, mm -hmm. and somehow it came across my radar, and I thought, like, well, might as well from, I might as well apply to that. that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe. You know, see what happens. What's that? Uh, it's based in Portland, but it's called the Regional Arts and Culture Council. So they they provide money throughout the kind of the area of, you know, like Oregon and Washington. I don't know if they go as far as California, but it's Portland based. Uh, well, I hadn't done any murals at this point, but I applied to be on this roster. And so this is another thing. I mean, like, just because you've never done a mural before doesn't mean you can't be on a roster. I submitted my fine art and wrote a statement about how I love scaling things up and scaling things down. And um, and I had done a 10-foot painting, and, and I could imagine it being 100 feet, you know. And, and, and so I... I they had three images and and you know a short little statement like that and that got included on the roster and a company wanted to do a mural on the side of their building and the regional arts and culture council said like well look through this roster and pick some artists you know and they selected me and and then we went through that process and they, and the the Regional Arts Council there, they, did pro they do provide grant money for murals. Uh, it's limited, so what they provided was like $5,000, which renting a lift and buying all the paints basically just covers costs. Is, and, you know, well, the company, you know, I said I'd love to do it, but it's like I need to get paid, and so... I worked with them, and they they ran a crowdfunding campaign, um, and we to off you know I, I put together a budget, and we have like the grant money, and then 
how much we want to try to raise. And so we, we did that. And it was kind of like, and that's the first time I'd ever done anything like it, but I wasn't in charge of the crowdfunding campaign, thank God. <laughs> um, so it worked out, and I got, I had a mural. And then the very next year, Boise, Idaho, mm -hmm. a company in Boise, Idaho, this is funny because you were like, you have to have local artists. And so this developer in Boise, Idaho contacted their local arts department and mm -hmm. said, who can we get to do a mural? And the local Boise department was sort of like, oh my goodness, we have so many local mural artists. There's so many murals. All the murals in Boise are by local artists. It's like, please get something from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Please, just anybody, you know? So they directed them to that same roster, mm -hmm. and they picked four artists, and I submitted a design and a proposal and a statement, and, you know, got, you know, the $500, and, five, you know, several other artists did, but then mine was selected. And then it just started, you know, like next year, another place in Boise called, yeah. When you get selected, and you're out of state, do you include the travel? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, so okay. when I'm, Can yeah. speak about uh, how you budget? For yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, budgeting was like, you know, the, at the beginning, the first mural, it was like, no idea. It was helpful because the Regional Arts Council, you know, like said, here's our budget form, you know, like, <laughs> like but basically, sometimes uh, a lot of projects will have a set budget. They're like, you know, the budget is $20,000, the budget is 30 or whatever, and it's sort of like, so you have to submit your budget based on that. What I do is set an artist fee, and it's based on square footage. Um, it's less as I get bigger, so it might be, you know, ten dollars for a, a square foot for a giant mural, you know, or it might be fifteen for a medium one. If it's a tiny thing, I'll go twenty. You know, I mean, it's you have to kind of, you know, I I, I sat down one day and just sort of figure out what seems fair to me. Um, but even then, it's going to be squishy sometimes. Sometimes there's no way you can cram your artist fee into the budget, and you, but you still want the job. So, so what I always do is say, this is my fee, but if this is the budget cap, it's like I'm willing to donate part of my fee to the project. It seems like a cool project. Um, Everything else I add on, you know, like the, the, the flight, the like how much I'm going to spend on food, on, a, on lodging, on transportation, uh, renting the lift, uh, get good quality paints, um, don't skimp, you know, because it's like you're saying this is my fee, everything else, you know, just, you know, make sure you want to do it right. Um, I will sometimes, yeah, if it if it seems worth it. So I'll add up all that budget stuff, and then, you know, say the budget for the project is twenty thousand dollars, and then my budget is thirty five thousand dollars, and my fee was fifteen thousand out of that thirty thousand budget. It's like I can't cut, I can't cut my fee altogether. But you know, so I just decide. I have to decide if this. Can I do it for that budget? Sometimes, as in this case, I had no idea what the budget was. I, I was like, I uh, said, make a bid. Yeah. So <laughs> and he provided a, a very, very detailed breakdown. And I, I copied the whole thing and I blanked it out and I wrote the total amount and I sent it to them. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes businesses get lost yeah. in the nuance and they, they start to go, well, do you really need? Do you really need five hundred dollars for that lift? Yeah. yeah. So, so you just you don't even give them that option. You're just yeah. like, here's what it's going to cost you. If you want to talk about why it's going to cost you that much, we can have that conversation. Yeah. I I just I rolled everything in together because I don't want them. Again, yeah. it's my goal to get artists paid. That's what we should be doing. We should be paying people for their creativity, for their donations. 
for for their livelihood. Yeah. Um, so I roll all that together. Right. And, when, and I will say every job I've ever done, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. It always changes, but but yeah. If it's for what? I, that's, yeah, so when I, um, that came up first when I was doing the, the ones, like, through the regional arts and culture, you know, department, because they are a nonprofit arts organization, and so I had to submit my first budget as, you know, for the grant money. Um, and so that's how it first came up, and I never, at that time, I never, I was like, what's in kind donation, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so, but the, I, I don't think, I mean, it wouldn't have, I never claimed anything tax-wise, you know, on my end, because I'm asking, you know, I'm getting money, you know, you you should be. You, maybe you I should, should be. be. See, I'm not I'm not tax savvy, so you know I'm not here to talk about tax. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we, let's tell me more later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So we 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 had gone through his portfolio, so we kind of knew what what sort of images we were looking for and you know the style and everything yeah. and uh, you went and had a few ideas mm -hmm. and then we came back and we said okay the VCB has five pillars that they want want to make sure is represented right. Right. Oh, right. This, yeah. this was the, the five yeah. pillars and it was equine arts it's, it was sports ecotourism was sports and what's the other one Oh, there was history. History, history. history. yes, yeah. yes. So, so that was that was the next step, and yeah. and uh, we we're like, well, okay, how how can how can we, you know, what what makes this fit? What makes this work? Yeah. And so we went through, and yo, yeah, it it fit. I, I had it, to, yeah, it was, you had to kind of squint, come through, yeah, <laughs> like to be able to to, you know, I had to think about it for a while, like how to talk about, like how is this. How is their history involved? How is their mm -hmm. sports involved? And I think we—I think you were the one who was sort of like, "There's a canoe." There's right? a canoe right there. Like, there's a canoe. Like that's a sport. I'm like okay. Okay, so um, were you like the head person, or did you transfer with Jordan when you were? No, the design is just was just me. This is all happening on my uh, on my end. So I was just working through. I, I knew that I was going to be working with a local artist but we hadn't really connected yet I mean so he's helping me with my design okay yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I sort of did. It, I I did this in. I don't know Photoshop or Illustrator, but I have a version of it that's like, fifteen years old or something. That, I mean, there's. There is a way to do it on Photoshop. Yeah. But. But on. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, the first time I did it, I had just had it. I had it printed up and and so I have this divided into like individual square feet. We didn't even go to square feet. I usually just use a yardstick, which is what we did on this one. Um, so I just go to yardstick and make marks and so I make hashtags on the building and the first time I did this process, I just printed it out and and I made sure that it printed out in whatever centimeters or inches so that I could just draw with a pencil, you know, and I just drew the grid myself, you know, just as long as I knew it was to scale. Yeah. Um, we can get to uh, like an 
materials and techniques and that kind of stuff. Um, so do you mind speaking about the public art roster and, and the sculpture contest? And sure, that? sure. Um, Before you do that, what are you with again? Public art for the city of Yep, Ohio? I'm with the cultural arts department. Yes, so uh, there is a, a QR code up here. It um, oh, goes wow. to a bunch of links, and that is included <laughs> in. And I can't tell you much about my division right now because we're currently in the middle of a big move. How long have you been about uh, Cultural Arts has been around for seven years now, and I've been with the city for almost three been a hostage for almost three years. Um, yeah, yeah. So good. They're good keepers. Um, so with the city, we have our public's arts roster. And like I said, if you if you are interested in doing any kind of art with the city, we'll open that up. We were hoping to open that up in, in April. We've been a little sidelined by recent city events. Um, my, my previous boss resigned and is, is off on a new adventure, and uh, they have moved us. We were with Rec and Parks, and we're now going to be with Growth Management. That happened, that happened last week. That happened last week. They're moving us tomorrow. So we're, we're a little bit all up in the air, and we're getting ready for Levitt, which if you don't know what Levitt is, you should. Levitt is a uh, 10 free concerts out on Webfield just down the road. Please join us. We've got some really fun bands this year, so we're, that's in two weeks. Um, and hopefully in between now and then, I will get to putting the artist roster up, hopefully in May. It'll be open to all. And what it basically does is it just gets you on a list. And that way, if I have somebody or we have an internal project where, where we're like, we need somebody to do a suspension piece. I keep on going back to that because we just added a suspension piece. That was yeah. another thing we did. Um, and there aren't very many artists that do suspension pieces because that's a lot of math. Yeah. And, and artists aren't great at math usually. <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> those, those, those big installations. Those big installations. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, yeah. it, it was a whole I thing. just. Uh, you're thinking of Art and City Spaces, I think. Yeah, Art and City Spaces is the program we have where if you are a a fine artist, you can actually apply to have a show with the city. And but we that have, is under, that is under us as well. We, we do First Friday Art Walk, we do Art and City Spaces, we do all the public art, okay. and we do quite a few of the concert series that are around. <laughs> and we're a team of three. Hey. Oh. Um, Yes. Yes, I remember you. Okay, so uh, I've done a lot of stuff in PA and other galleries mm -hmm. around me. It's, it's all fun, but I've never done a mural. So I must mm -hmm. love doing murals. Mm -hmm. If I want to get my name on this roster and I have zero experience doing a mural, what are the odds you're going to call me? Well, the odds are because you're local that we might be able to partner you up. Yeah with somebody who's coming and visiting or or get you sort of connected and more involved. That's well, that's our goal. And if you're working with a business or something mm -hmm. and they, they like say work and chose you. That, mm -hmm. that was yeah. question. So let's say I did I like okay, the key was right there. And mm -hmm. they want you mm -hmm. and they call me because they know me. Mm -hmm. That's all fine to do, right? Yep, and that is in our district. Yeah. So you would have to get a permit to do that. Permit, yes. But it's not like well we don't know his Right. Well, what that would be is, all right, just because you're not on the roster and we're not currently taking applications does not mean you cannot get on the roster. All you have to do is call us out, say, hey, I'd love to be on your roster. I'm a local artist. How can I do this? And I'll tell you, I need just a few things. I need three samples of your work. I need an artist statement and I need your resume. And then I need your, your actual name and contact information. That's it. So if I found my own like mural job, I still have. Is there any? I have to be on the roster. To work in the downtown district, yes. Uh, yes. That sounds like not a force. Go for right. If if you're far if you're farther out, go for it. Just go rogue. No, no, don't. 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 <laughs> don't. It's just it's it's the downtown district right now. 
that entails. Uh, it goes, all right, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's from the edge of Tuscawilla Park down through uh, Pine over to, I believe it's 18. Yeah. Oh, we do, we do it everywhere, but this is, yeah, we, we, we do art everywhere. Right. There's art outside of the district too. But this is just if you, right, it's, there's code enforcement downtown. Um, the application, the, the permit is free. You do, there's, there's a no cost permit. So, right. <laughs> uh, that's right. If you're going <laughs> to, wink, if, if, if you just happen to be north, yes, yes, there, there is. Uh, there's, always, there's always workarounds, and we want to be able to say yes, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My, yeah. My, res my response is going to be, "Show me the money." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes uh, because again, we want to be able to pay our artists. We yeah. don't want to be able to like put them in a financial situation where they're not going to be able to put food on their table. So again, what took so long with the VCB was they were trying to get their funds together and decide how mm. much money do we have, how much can we spend. What what else are we going to do to the building? Yeah, we so, the building. right, right, yeah. yeah. So so you know, you know, yeah, it's part it's, of the delay. it's part of the delay. But what you're saying is like every place is different. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's always little different rules. But I know like the the regional arts council that I was talking about in Oregon, their grant money. One of the grants that they actually give is like if you like have contact with a building owner and they like they want to do a mural it still needs to be permitted but you go through their process and they'll they'll grant you know that five thousand dollars and handle the permit at the same time so if you don't you know, if you look farther afield and find out you just have to find out what the processes are you know yeah. but yeah but i mean it's yeah, yeah. or or i mean yeah. if yeah. Basically, any anywhere oh, Mac, anywhere you are, if, the, if there's a, and if you if you have a contact with a building owner, you're like this wall would be an amazing mural, like, and you approach them and and they're like, you're like, yeah, you're right, that would yeah. be awesome. Then you have a start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you're like, yeah. I I could do I something know. with that. So Find out who owns it. Talk to them. For, I mean, for instance, um, I just got approved through OMAC, which is the Ocala Municipal Arts Council, or committee. Commission. Um, yeah. It's one, one of those, those one of those C words. <laughs> um, I, uh, so I'm actually going to be putting a mural on the front of my gallery space. Oh, wow. um, but, <laughs> you know, it is within their city limits type of thing. So I did have to apply through OMAC, but it is through, a, I, I'm getting paid through a private donor. It's, you know, all, you know, our own thing, but I just had to put a, a nice little proposal together so that they could be like, we're cool with that imagery, you have experience, or not even, you have, like, you know, uh, it, it's, I mean, largely it comes down to, are you going to do the proper uh, surface prep? Are you going to, you know, what does your art look like? And then, like, they really want to know if you're going to seal it. So uh, they, they love the clear coat, especially like like for, for the mural that we're working on at the VCD, it, it uh, starts on the second floor. So graffiti is probably not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, Sun damage will. Yes, yeah. certain yeah. things like that. And so uh, a lot yeah. of uh, clear coats that we use on murals, and we'll get into this in just a second, but um have like uv blockers so they actually um uv rays are what break down color um and uh does anybody know what uh light fastness is 
Uh, so like, uh, so there's this, there's a rating, um, Einstein, right? yeah. and it, it basically like certain colors break down faster with, with UV light. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a rating between one and three and, um, one being the, the highest rating. And, uh, yeah. So when you're looking for colors that you want to last on a mural, uh, you're going to try to go with those. Uh, you know, light fastness one um, category. But uh, yeah, so, um, you know, the, all those types of things we'll, we'll take into account. Um, Real quick, just to add on, just yeah. from having researched um, grants, there are grants for the state of Florida, there are grants by mid central Florida, there are grants by county. Yeah. 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 It's, it's hard. We have MCA grants, we yeah. have FAFO grants, we have OMAC yeah, grants. So right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. For sure. All, everywhere I know of, I mean, it, it's the, a lot of this stuff is it's hard to find. You know, like you, people who provide grants are trying to figure out how to get the word out, and the artists are like, "How do I even look for them?" You know, so it's but they're there. They're always there mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. Um. So I think. Uh, David and I can kind of take it from here okay. as far as uh, <laughs> materials and techniques and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna, should I take her mic? Yeah. Well, but the the good oh, yeah. people on Facebook here, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. I thought I'd throw these around if people want to look. Yeah. Them. So yeah. David, uh, David has um, the plans. Uh, it's his uh, sketches and stuff oh, for what we're on working it. on. Um, he he did grid it out. Um, one thing that uh, I have done with my murals is I've done a lot of. Uh, projectors. Uh, you know, I use a projector to, to put my image on the wall. Um, I find that's really helpful, but with uh, our mural being on a corner and it's so high up, you know, a projector was kind of out of the, the picture. Um, so we did have to resort to grids and um, that's, you know, what a lot of artists do. Um, and uh, one thing that I've learned since working with David is when we were up on the lift, you know, um, I probably would have thought to grab a tape measure to measure everything out. And we, we actually used a, a rigid um, yardstick, yeah. you know, and I it's think that's a really nice the two little do, tip. Is the $2 just, dollar wooden yardstick. Yeah. And it's great, too, because if not in this mural, but you can also just sort of like just hold up there and do a nice straight line sure. if you need to. And, you know, it's, yeah, they're awesome. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, some materials and techniques. And this is uh, in reference to murals, but um, some of it is uh, relatable to sculpture and other public art. Um, you know, you do want to try to use the, the best um, materials that you can afford or mm. that your donor or grant can afford. Um, we are uh, currently using Nova paints, which are kind of top of the line. Uh, they all have really wonderful light fastness ratings. Mm. And, um, and they're actually all, you know, it's not like your Sherman Williams paints where it's like, uh, yeah, all the, you know, all of those, um, you pick any peachy, uh, yeah. all sunset those, or something like that, you know, it's all like, those colors are made from multiple. Right. Yeah. So we're working with burnt sienna. We're working yeah. with phthalo blues and greens, the same you know, things all things you that would, you would find in your color palette. Yeah. That you would pick up in a tube at an art store. Yeah. They're made for murals. And specifically yeah. outdoor yeah. murals. Um, yeah. I mean, although you could use them indoors, but they're pricey, right? right. So so um, with an What's indoor that? mural and indoor art, you don't really have to worry too it's much about Nova color. The, yeah. the weather, yeah. Nova the color you know, sun damage, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, you know, when you're, you're working indoors, it's obviously vastly different from working outdoors. Um, 
you know, as well as, uh, you know, the materials that you need and yeah. um, your approach to things. So, um, you know, I've done quite a bit of indoor murals and I'll just either use um, some of my artist acrylics or I use, um, you know, indoor wall paints. Um, you know, it that's what they're made for. They're not going to have that UV damage um and you really don't even have to clear coat it because i mean unless like it's a maybe like a um like a, a daycare or something where you know kids are just gonna be like everywhere touching the walls and stuff you might want to clear coat it then so it's easy to clean but um but yeah so uh one thing with outdoor murals and indoor murals is surface prep um, and that's really important now for the VCB mural that we're working on the building just recently got painted yeah. so we didn't have to do any surface prep but uh, say you know you're working on a building that hasn't been painted in a few years they're just dirt and grime and you know all no. these things so uh, one nice thing to uh, think about is um, there's a, a cleaner, it's a T, T, TSP cleaner, um, and it's, we got links up here if, if you need them, you know, um, that's, you know, but yeah, so, uh, so a TSP cleaner is really um, great, uh, it just kind of removes the dirt and grime, you can rinse it with uh, like a warm water type of thing, hmm. yes. Um, sometimes it could be necessary. Sometimes, um, it's important to prime the wall as well after you've cleaned it. Um, but you do want to make sure all of the mold, mildew, dirt, grime, all that stuff is gone. The, the TSP is, is specifically for that. Um, mold and mildew and all of that jazz. Um, and then, uh, you know, once your, your surface prep is done, you know, you, you paint with your, your colors. But then, um. Oh, wait a second. Don't you put a gesso down or something? You can, yeah. And, um, or you know, or, or yeah. primer. So it, it depends what you're doing. Um, and you also have to, sometimes you have to take into account, like, you know, uh, was this painted with latex paints? Was this painted with oil paints, you know? Um, so uh, if, if something is painted with like an oil-based uh, paint and you're using acrylics on top, it's generally a no-no. So uh, things like that are, are important to um, think about. Um, but yeah, so, so you prep your surface, uh, you paint your mural, um, and then you, you clear coat it. I did bring a couple um, so this is a mural shield. It's a, a really wonderful product, an anti-graffiti product. Um, and it's used with a sprayer. So you can uh, quickly apply it. Um, yeah. Um, and then uh, I also brought, I've also used this as well, which is uh, a very, uh, another like high quality product. It's called, uh, the company is Ronin. Uh, it's an Aquathane, um, but that also has those UV blockers that we were talking about. So it helps protect the color for longer. When you say graffiti, so if you put this on and someone graffitis over, you're saying you can wash off the graffiti Right. So, um, so for different things. Well, there's, there's two, basically there's two types of graffiti protection. Right. One is sacrificial. That is you put a coating on the graffiti goes on top of that. Mm -hmm. Then you just wipe off that coating that you put on the graffiti comes yeah. off with it, but then it has to be reapplied. Right. Gotcha. Um, okay. the other one is this a surface where the the spray paint doesn't really adhere to it, but like I've never heard anybody who's been super, super happy with those kinds of, they're supposed to be like, you, where it it's, just it's washes a, right generally off. like a wax base and, yeah. and you can actually remove the graffiti with a warm water type yeah. of thing. But it's very thick and it, and it, 
affects the colors, yeah. you know, of the mural. Yeah, mural. yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay. most people usually go with the sacrificial coating, but you just have to bear in mind that it does need to be reapplied any time you have to deal with the gra graffiti. Gotcha. You gotta take it off and then you gotta put on a new coating. Um, another thing uh, I did not know when I started. <laughs> <laughs> um, an, another uh, thing that a lot of muralists use are spray paints, and spray paints come in a variety, um, both you know acrylic and oil based, as well as you know just a wide range of quality. Um, one of my favorite spray paints to use uh, is uh, Montana Gold. Um, now, Montana makes a few different uh, um, spray paint um, options, and they're really based off of the uh, pressure that's in the can. So um, this is kind of like a medium pressure, so it doesn't spray too quick, nor does it like kind of just lag. Um, they also have like really wonderful colors. These are made for graffiti, for, uh, for um, you know, different things like that. Um, and they, they do really have, that, uh, you know, these types of companies have a light fastness chart. So you can actually see That's good what know. color, you know, what colors have, um, you know, the best. I, right. I, I've never used spray paint, but like we're, one of the sides of this mural is, is brick and it's real rough and stuff and there are times where I want to fill an area and doing it with a brush is a pain in the butt yeah and it would be good to know like like maybe I should pick up some of that just to like do an undercoating you know just fill in I've never done it but I need to I need to look into that yeah yeah for sure <laughs> yeah um, a rough texture. you know when using spray paints you got to be safe uh yeah. you know a dust mask doesn't do the trick. So you do want a respirator. Um, it's important, um, you know, especially if you're using a lot of that, huh? Hardware you can, you can get these at any hardware store. Uh, you just want to make sure that it is rated for paint. So, um, that's a, another thing. Um, so as far as like, uh, public art in general too, you know, uh, you, you want to be using materials that are going to hold up in, in, in weather. You're, you're, um, also, you know, we, uh, we have a wonderful sculpture garden that happens around, uh, Tuscawilla, right? And all of those sculptures, um, have to have very specific, uh, you know, quality, uh, you know, materials and that kind of thing. Um, also, you know, kids are probably going to be climbing on things, you know, whatever. Um, so it's, it's good to have nice durable materials to think about, you know, where it's going to be, the, the audience that it's there for. Um, and, and yeah. Yeah. That's, and this is why I say if you ever have an opportunity to do something where they're asking you to submit a budget, you know, just propose like, you did, you know, it was open-ended. I don't know. Well, I'm not going to skimp on the expenses because I'm not paying for them. I set my artist fee separately. Yeah. So I'm going to add into the budget, like, you know, well, I'm going to get the best paints that I can get. I'm going to get a really good lift so I can move all around the wall. I'm not going to be a cheapskate and say, I'll do it with a ladder, you know, <laughs> that'd be terrible. No, he rented it, you know, and it's I renting it for a month and it's $3,000, you know, so it's a big chunk of money, but that doesn't change what I set for my fee. Well, and I mean, if you're working with a client that wants a quality public art piece, mm -hmm. then, you know, they're going to hopefully pay out for those materials. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. So there's certain things, like I understand the paintings you buy a friend, you have to keep, but say things like a or your airfare because mural doesn't take long or takes longer. Yeah. How do you adjust for that type of thing? Uh, how do you mean adjust for it? Like if the lift goes back earlier. Oh. Or well, say the lift takes longer. This is the airfare. Yeah. So you wanna you you, you just wanna make your your best guess, you know, and don't skimp or whatever. And it's like if they agreed on the budget, 
the fact, the truth is, I mean, if if I can find a, I mean, I'm staying at the the Hilton, which um, uh, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it is so close, and that's the only reason I'm going to stay there. Is like, but I mean, if I found like like Jordan's friend had a room, and you know, he's like, it's just around the corner or whatever, and I'm like, sweet, because I mean, I'm they're paying for the total budget, mm -hmm. so I would be saving money. Um, but yeah, if I have to get my last, I estimate my flight, my flight out here is six hundred dollars, and it's like, and then, like, I can find it for four hundred. Great, I made a couple hundred bucks, but but it's like, oh, last minute, so it's seven hundred. It, you yeah, you're just sort of like, this is the budget, so you want it to be as realistic as possible, and maybe, like, a little generous, but like, don't you know, you, you know, just trying to be realistic. Yeah. And because I, I think that can change from from job to job, for sure. client to client. There, and, I have um, done jobs where where all the expenses were reimbursed with receipts. Okay. That's a different okay. way of doing yeah. it, you know. So, so it depends from job to job. It does, right? It okay. does. Yeah, and um, you know, on these types of things, communication is absolutely key. Uh, you just want to be clear from the get-go and um, you know delays sometimes happen and you know uh, damages can happen and, and things like <laughs> that but you know um, yeah it's it's yeah uh, yeah I yeah. mean you you want to make sure that your client is happy um, and you also want to make sure that you're happy and um, yes So Photoshop is really great as far as murals go, and I think you could absolutely do this with sculpture and, and, and you know, um, installation work as well. Um, if you can photograph it well and, and uh, kind of crop that in Photoshop, you can pretty much put it anywhere. So, um, you know, there's a lot of my murals. I, I realize I'm a very visual person and a lot of people are, but, you know, a lot, not, uh, uh, you know, if you just show people like a picture of like what you're thinking, they're like, oh, that's cool. If you show them a picture of that image on that wall, like yeah. superimposed, I mean, it's just the, it, it's so much clearer. Yeah, you you and, have to and It's do all that. about communication <laughs> and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, if you, yeah, you got to do that. Like, sort of. It's like, good for you as well. When you do your design, I mean, if if you're applying for something and they say submit a proposal, you know, you come up with your your design, but you you you're gonna submit that, but you're also going to submit it like photoshopped onto where it's going to be done so they can really imagine how that will look on the on the building yeah yeah you have anything else you should <laughs> <laughs> any questions I think we asked them throughout. yeah no which is great it, it really makes it more comfortable conversation <laughs> yeah. like um leslie did you have anything else Fantastic. Yeah. And and so that's uh, for the Tuscawilla Art Park. Fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> neat area. So um, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, the QR code I did put together some links um, for for both uh, you know murals and uh, well muralists and public artists as well as you know. Uh, how to, you know, things to consider when commissioning art and um, also like materials, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, you can come see what we're working on over at VCB. <laughs> uh, we're pretty much there every day. Um, and then uh, this Saturday is also the studio and gallery tours. 
um, for Ocala. So um, it is. It's uh, yeah. April first you know is my, Saturday. I was gonna, so I was gonna announce it's like uh, I did not bring my business cards. Don't tell me. Um, kill me. My space <laughs> is uh, Shop at Art <laughs> Studio and Gallery right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so I'm gonna write down you guys, my yeah, name y'all know and it. email um, and website. But yeah, thank you all for coming out. I uh, hope you. Um,